as you can sort of see over here, what happens is once the attack is sort of sent in, so this would be the attack, the system then responds with a corresponding message according to the instruction that's been given. And at the end over here, it goes on to reveal personal information for the users of the company. So you can see this sort of includes phone numbers and emails. With these systems becoming even more and more integrated into the systems that we can use, you can only see how this sort of approach becomes more and more applicable for hackers to get access to this sort of information because these AI systems just have a lot more personal information that's being given to them because they need it in order to perform the tasks that they do. So recently there's been a lot of growing concerns around AI safety. The fact that many organizations are now using automated AI systems to run their operations and could instantly get hacked and have all their systems completely compromised by these new AI hacking methods is becoming increasingly real. It's very likely that the next big threat might have nothing to do with passwords and personal information but more to do with the way that we're building AI right now and integrating it into pretty much all company operations, allowing it access to more and more of users' personal information and opening up new ways that you can use this information and power to perform malicious activities. So we're going to explore what some of these new weaknesses are, some really new ways to exploit them and also explore how you can ensure that you're safe from these sorts of hacking systems. Now really quickly I noticed that Grok is going to be going completely open source this week and I must say it's becoming increasingly difficult to understand Elon Musk's actions at this point. So he's gone from blaming OpenAI for becoming closed to being found to have been the one that encouraged their closed source movement in the first place and then now open sourcing his own initially closed model in the span of about two weeks. This guy is moving really fast and everybody on X seems to love it as always. But all jokes aside, open sourcing Rock is going to be a huge win for the open source community. So we've had really good models like Mixture to begin with but if you remember Grok is actually one of those live models so it trains on live Twitter data kind of like Gemini does on Google's live data so it will be really interesting to see exactly how this setup is being achieved once the model is fully open source as we haven't had a model of that sort in the open source community yet so it's definitely going to be a new feature for the open source community. On the more serious side of things adversarial self-replicating prompts so you may or may not have heard of them but this is essentially a collection of new prompting technologies that install virus behavior into personal generative systems like ChatGPT and Gemini and use their ability to access company or personal documents to spread this virus behavior to other systems. Now obviously this is a big deal because with OpenAI assistants, custom GPTs and inbuilt Gemini assistants that has direct access to your entire Google Suite information including your emails, calendars, sign-ins, etc. There's a lot of information for these sorts of virus systems to exploit through their access to the AI systems that we use. But it doesn't even have to be as a result of your own action. So a lot of the companies that we work with nowadays have fully integrated AI agents into their system. These agents have the ability to access their customers information, make modifications to it and invoke actions on behalf of the customers. The fact that these systems need to have access to this personal information and the ability to call actions automatically makes them extremely vulnerable to these new sorts of attacks. Here's exactly how it works. So the infection of a system begins with the attacker sending in a poisoned prompt. This prompt includes malicious instructions on exactly how the AI system should handle the message that it receives and how it can further propagate this message into the company's database and internal resources. Using common systems like maybe a RAG database, the malicious prompt instructs the AI on exactly how to self-replicate this prompt into the company's database so that other systems can be infected as well. Once the malicious instruction has been stored, it can then be shared to other systems. One of the key uses of these sorts of attacks is to extract personal information of the customers of the company. So for example, this is a demonstration of such an attack being executed on Gemini and ChatGPT. As you can sort of see over here, what happens is once the attack is sort of sent in, so this would be the attack, the system then responds with a corresponding message according to the instruction that's been given. And at the end over here, it goes on to reveal personal information for the users of the company. So you can see this sort of includes phone numbers and emails. With these systems becoming even more and more integrated into the systems that we can use, you can only see how this sort of approach becomes more and more applicable for hackers to get access to this sort of information because these AI systems just have a lot more personal information that's being given to them because they need it in order to perform the tasks that they do. But this is an example of an attack that can be executed on you without any of your information because it's done on the systems that are deployed by a company that you use and you actually wouldn't know that something of this sort is going on until you sort of notice that your personal information has been leaked and maybe you start receiving emails from the individuals that got access to this personal information. An even more interesting technique that I learned about last week was this at prompt. So an ASCII best jailbreak attack against aligned LLM. This is actually something that you can actually try 
out on your own and i will leave the instructions for how to do this in this particular video how this works is that it uses a hidden text technique to bypass the security protection measures that are in a lot of aligned llms so like telling the user how to build something dangerous but then it uses a mask over here to sort of hide the dangerous item that you want to build and using this type of technique even the very latest versions of chat gpt like gpt4 for instance or even gemini seem to be completely compromised by some of these techniques this paper goes into detail on exactly how to perform these sorts of attacks but what i went ahead and did was i sort of tried this on my own so you can sort of see footage of me trying it here and the idea is to hide the dangerous word in a code that the model has not been trained on how to censor for instance you could do this using mo's code you can sort of encrypt the dangerous word over here using that exact technique and then you can ask the model to never use that word but then proceed to tell you how to prepare the word that you've asked it to do and as you can see over here this technique works really well even on gpt 4.5 these new hacking techniques are not necessarily a case of ai becoming less and less safe but rather a situation where because we're putting more and more information into these models and allowing them to perform more and more activities they inevitably become more and more advantageous for malicious parties to attack because of the amount of value that they can extract from that and pretty much the only way to deal with this is by deploying new safety techniques so one of the coolest things that i've seen from OpenAI earlier on this year was their introduction of a new moderation model that's completely free and is in charge of detecting these sort of malicious prompts when they're entered into models and this is really the only way to do this the previous techniques that involved simply training the model on how to detect dangerous information this doesn't really work anymore the better way to do it now is to have a separate moderation model that filters all content that is sent to these llms and only allows them to receive the information that it deems is safe so i'm sure there's a lot of work that we're going to continue doing on this front but i'm quite interested in hearing exactly what you guys think about this topic so be sure to leave all your comments in the comment section and make sure you leave a sub on this video if you've enjoyed it and i will catch you in the next one peace out